Do you remember meeting Ed Sullivan the first oh, time? Oh yeah, sure. Tell I mean, it wasn't say he's kind of he was he was just what he looked like. He was you know, <laughs> <laughs> but he uh, he took a, a I held out. They wanted me on that show. Here I am, you know, still now in my early developmental stage. Although I was on national television a lot. And they wanted me on the Ed Sullivan show, and I resisted because I had heard that they were very brutal with comedians about cutting their time at the last minute. You have six minutes, they come and tell you to cut a minute because the monkeys went long, you know? <laughs> Sorry, but the baboon went long, you're going to have to cut. So I didn't want that because I did, oh, I did set pieces. I didn't do a series of jokes that I could cut five of them out right. to take out a minute. I did a piece that, required, that I had memorized that was six minutes long, and that was it. And you couldn't take out anything. So I didn't want them going around doing that to me. Uh, that would usually happen, you know, you have dress rehearsal in the afternoon, and then you would have the broadcast at night, live, 8 o'clock. And it would happen between dress and air, they would tell you to maybe cut a minute. And then between air, when they started at 8, and the time you went on, 8.40 or something maybe, they would come tell you to take out 30 seconds more or something. So it was, I didn't want that. I was, and I was fearful enough doing live television. So, um... I finally gave in, and I wound up doing 11 Ed Sullivan shows, uh, and I, wa I wound up really writing some very poor material. Uh, I mean, my, my standard really fell off, because there you are, you're offered two more Sullivan shots, and the money is great, and, and you know the exposure is important, and you want to, you know, do that, so, you know, you go ahead and you write a piece, and it's not quite... What it all well, yeah, but I was surprised going back listing. You did the hair poem the one time, the one that was that's, that's toward the end of the show. Yeah, yeah. The, the hair poem and the thing about uh, the uh, America ecology. The beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was surprised. Did they give you any flack about that? I mean, did you have to no, review that? No, no. It was by then. Um, uh, that by then I had my beard and I had begun to grow my hair and I uh, I had stopped wearing a jacket. It was more of a vest look. You know, it wasn't uh, kind of like. Um, uh, street clothes, they were a little nicer, but they were nonetheless a shirt and a vest, you know. And um, at that point, uh, they had, you know, he always accommodated, they always accommodated the change. Uh, Elvis Presley was on there, and the Beatles, and, and the Stones, and, and they always, you know, they still did an opera singer, they still did people juggling plates. Popo Gijo. But what, what I did was, uh, you know, I they told me I had a choice between two jokes. Uh, at dress rehearsal, I did, among other jokes, I did two jokes that were topical. And, they, and, uh, and one of them was about Governor George Wallace of Alabama, who was running for president, who was a racist and a, and a segregationist. And, um, and he had a favorite saying he would always talk about the liberals by, by referring to the pointy-headed intellectuals. He called them pointy-headed intellectuals up there in Washington. You know the point, he was a populist, he, he appealed to a populist kind of a racist thing. So, um, so um, he, he called them, and, and I said in this routine, I said, uh, talking about George Wallace, I said, you talk about pointy heads, have you ever seen the sheets those people put on me? <laughs> So that was one joke. That was one joke in the monologue. Another joke in the monologue was about Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali was the champ at that time. His name was still Cassius Clay. And he was the champion of the world. And they took away his championship because he wouldn't go to Vietnam. He refused to go. And he was, of course, right to do that, um, I think. Uh, now, what I said about it was this, they, they, they told him, you know, no more, sorry, you can't, no more, bo no more boxing, you know, because you won't go and do your thing in, the, in Vietnam. So I said it this way. I said, Muhammad Ali, his job was beating people up. That was his job, beating people up. They wanted him to go overseas and kill people. And he said, no, I don't want to kill people. I'd rather just beat them up. <laughs> and they said, all right, well, if you won't go and kill people, we're not going to let you beat them up. <laughs> Which was, and they, they told me between, between dress and air, they told me, they said, you can have your, this is the oddest censorship I ever experienced. They said, you can have one or two of, one of those jokes or the other, but not both. <laughs> you know, it was volume rather than, <laughs> it was the strangest thing. So, I t obviously, I chose the Muhammad Ali joke, which is a far smarter joke, you know, yeah. than the pointy head. And uh, so that, that's, that was my memory of the, la the last show I did. Uh, you know, he went off the air. Actually, I did the second to last Ed Sullivan broadcast, although we didn't know it at the time.
and the big fight is coming up. Ali and Frazier, Muhammad Ali, I call him Muhammad Ali because that's what he wants. Oh yeah, he's a big dude and he hits hard, you know. I'll call him what he wants, but uh, it's good that he's being allowed to work again. As you know, he couldn't work for three years. Uh, of course, he had a strange job beating people up. But that was his, you know, he, his right, he could have that job. Government wanted him to change jobs. Government wanted him to kill people. He thought it over and he said, no, that's where I draw the line. Uh, I'll beat him up and I don't want to kill him. And the government told him, well, if you won't kill him, we won't let you beat him up. Uh, and it was all because he didn't want to go to Vietnam. And now we're getting out of Vietnam through Laos and Cambodia. That's got to be the long way. You've got to go through China and Russia to get out that way. What are we going to tell them? We'll only be here a short time. We're just looking for a trail. Well, maybe they'll go for it. I don't know. Of course, we're only there in Southeast Asia for one reason, to free the people so they can have industry. Isn't that what we do everywhere, I think? We kind of free people and then lay a little industry on them so they can have all the benefits of industry that we have. <coughs> Oh, beautiful for smoggy skies, insecticided grain, for strip-mined mountains, majesty above the asphalt plain. America, America, man sheds his waste on thee and hides the pines with billboard signs from sea to oily sea.